Hi, my name is Stephen McGee and I'm the author of Electrical Forensics. And we're doing some stray voltage work here. And we have a meter on the left, which is recording current. And it's currently not recording current because it's not connected to the system. We're gonna connect it in in a minute. And we have on the right an oscilloscope. And in the red, you can see the AC waveform. And in the yellow, you can see that we have stray voltage on the grounding system. I'm just gonna go through some of the numbers that's on the grounding system. So we have a, an RMS value of 506 millivolts. We have a maximum voltage of one volt. We have a peak to peak value of two volts. And we have a frequency, which is kind of interesting, of it's about 17 kilohertz, so it bounces around a little bit, but yeah, it seems to be between 17 and 19 kilohertz. And that's all that junk that you can see that's making the line thick on the waveform. So if you look at the red waveform, it's nice and thin, but the yellow waveform is thick, and that is an indication that it has a lot of high frequency noise riding on it. And the oscilloscope's reporting that to be in the kilohertz range. So... We're going to short out the grounding probe of the ground system to a non-electrified ground rod in my back garden. And the reason why we're going to do this is I've noticed that my current has gone down. I can't really pass a lot of current between the two systems. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So I just connected the current meter in. And you can see it's now it's reading 3.8 milliamps and last year I was getting about 60 milliamps when the ground rod was new so I think the ground rod the reference ground rod in the back garden doesn't have a very good connection to it right now for passing current so if I take it off you can see we get our waveform back I put it back on we lose the waveform and we start passing 4 milliamps so I'm interested in the frequency content of that yellow waveform and it has a lot of high frequency on it so we're going to take a little look with a function called the fast Fourier transform function as to what's going on with that yellow waveform in the frequency domain so the FFT is now on and you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff over on the left that's the 60 Hertz harmonic on the far left and the other spikes that you can see coming out from that, they're just all odd harmonics of that fundamental 60 hertz frequency. So we're going to change the time base a little bit and we're going to go to 10 kilohertz per division. So you can see we've got some 10 kilohertz repeating spikes in here. And you'll notice that there's a lot of general junk on this background. And uh, particularly around this 10 to 20 kilohertz, we're, we're getting spikes of noise and over here also. So let's take a little look further out and see what we find. So this is 100 kilohertz per division. And you'll notice that we get all these spikes. This all appears to be the AM radio band over on the right. So they appear to be radio stations that are on the grounding system. So if you were to hook your radio in to the grounding system, you may actually get good radio reception. So you can see there's a general background noise on the waveform. So what we're going to do now is we're going to water the ground rods. We're going to get them really, really wet and we're going to see what happens. So as you can see, water in the gram rods didn't really appear to do much. And it's something that I've suspected for a while that whether your gram rods are wet or whether they're dry, 
What determines the level of stray voltage on your system is what the utility company is doing. And this is very clearly coming from the utility company neutral system. As I've actually disconnected my fuse board from the system and I still see the same voltage on the utility company neutral at their meter. So one of the last things that I want to do is I actually want to perform a current test. And if you watch the meter on the left, I'm going to pass current through that meter from the electrical grounding system to the non-electrified ground rod. And we can see what we're going to get. So our current availability has gone up a little bit. So we now got 6.3 milliamps. And one of the reasons why we're not getting a huge amount of current going between the ground rods right now is that the voltage on the system is quite low. It's kind of a cloudy day today. And not many people are running the air conditioning systems. And we only have an RMS voltage of 500 millivolts right now. So there's not a lot of voltage there to pass current between ground rods right now. With the voltage was higher on the system we would be able to pass much more current through. So that was the difference between dry ground rods and wet ground rods in the voltage domain and we're going to switch over to a function called FFT and we're going to look in the frequency domain and it pretty much looks the same as before to me. We're on 500 hertz per division in the horizontal direction, 20 decibels per division in the vertical. And we're going to extend it out to 10 kilohertz per division in the horizontal direction. And we can see the 10 kilohertz repeating spikes in there. And we're going to go out to 100 kilohertz per division. And on the right side, we can actually see what appears to be the AM radio band. So I hope you enjoyed the presentation on dry and wet ground rods and I wish you the very best of health. Thank you.